The book of Revelation, of course, is the final book of the Bible. It was originally addressed to seven local churches in Asia, or uh, what is today modern-day Turkey. These churches were a real mixed bag. Some of them were excellent churches. Some were mediocre. A couple of them were a mess. And each of these churches had a message coming from Christ. And today we're looking at chapter 3 and the final three churches that have messages sent from the Lord Himself. Uh, the, the outline of, for each of these messages is pretty consistent. They each start with a description of Christ Himself, uh, which really looks back to chapter 1 and the descriptions there. But what it says in verse 1, it says, And to the angel of the church in Sardis write, He who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars says this, I know your deeds, that you have a name, that you are alive, and that you are dead. And so we have a picture of Christ here. The seven spirits, uh, most believe, is a picture of the Holy Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit being uh, seven spirits in a sense of completion or perfection. The seven stars, uh, most believe, are the churches themselves. And so the Lord is uh, in charge of and controls the seven churches or the seven stars. His message uh, to this church at Sardis was this, I know your deeds. He's uh, omnipotent. He knows all things. And that you have a name that you are alive, but you are dead. That's a very sorry statement, isn't it? Wouldn't it be awful to be a local church that thought they were doing great things for God, uh, that they were really on target, they were a great church, and get a message from the Lord that your reputation, in fact, in the world, the outward appearance is that you are alive. You are a, a going entity. And people look to you as a great church. But God's uh, comment on this, Christ's comment, is that they were dead. It doesn't really matter, of course, long term, whether uh, anybody on the outside thinks uh, a local church is a good church or a great church or whatever. What matters is what does Christ think about our local churches, my church, your church, uh, the church at Sardis. And the Lord said, you look like you're alive. You look like you've got it going. But the truth is that you are dead. What a what an ugly picture. So we have in this final chapter on to the churches, chapter 3, we have two churches that look like they're doing great, this one in Laodicea, and both of them, the Lord says, you're not doing well at all. And then one church sandwiched in between, the Church of Philadelphia, uh, that seemed to the world to be not very much at all, and yet the Lord gives it great commendations. But let's press on here and look at the message the Lord has for this church. Uh, several things he says in verse 2. Wake up and strengthen the things that remain, which are about to die, for I'm, I have not found your deeds completed in the sight of my God. So he, he says, look, strengthen the things that remain. So everything wasn't totally gone yet. There must have been some spark of, uh, of life left in that church. And he calls for them to recognize those things and strengthen them. And he says, also, I have not found your deeds completed in my sight. Whatever they were doing uh, was not completed. It was not what God wanted them to do. Perhaps some good starts, but no good completions. So what does he tell them to do? In verse 3, he says, first of all, remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. Now, what would that be? Oh, I think it has to be the gospel. I think it has to be the Holy Spirit. I think it has to be all the riches that Christ gives his people and his churches. And he tells them, I want you to remember what those are and what you have received. And then keep it. Uh, this is an idea of perseverance. We find this throughout uh, the, the letter to the people at Sardis. They need to persevere. They, they have had some good starts. They perhaps have done some good things, but they're not, doing, uh, they're not persevering. So keep it, he says, and repent. So there's sections of their lives where they need to recognize they're going the wrong direction. They're simply wrong, and they need to turn around and go another direction. They need to repent of what they're doing. If therefore you do not wake up, and I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what hour I will come upon you. Uh, wake up is the uh, idea here of uh, in, in the tenses. It's something where you'd wake up and stay awake. So don't just wake up from your spiritual nap. Wake up and stay awake. Continue on. Progress uh, for him. If you don't, he says, I'm coming at an hour when you do not know. He talked earlier to one of the churches about removing their lampstand their ministry, their, their light for Christ. I think that's what he's talking about here. But you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their garments, and they will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Uh, fortunately, at Sardis, like in almost any church, uh, there are a few people still 
who are walking with God, although the majority apparently were not. I've seen throughout the years many churches that long ago had their lampstand probably removed. Uh, they, they're not teaching the gospel. They're, they have apostatized. But there's some saints in that church that are still walking with God, still living for Him. And uh, their hope, of course, is to bring that church back to where it should be. Uh, that doesn't happen too often. But there, were, there are people in almost any church that love Christ and are walking with Him. So we find that Sardis, there are some there that like that, and he encourages them. And then he begins to talk about those who will overcome. And we're going to pick that up tomorrow. There's a very powerful message at the end of this uh, uh, admonishment, this, this teaching to this church. We want to look at that closer tomorrow. So you join us tomorrow. You have a wonderful day in the Lord.